The business of dirt tracks has a big problem right now that I don't really know how we solve. We'll talk about that, plus a very weird Ricky Thornton Jr. stat, an Ohio sprint car driver change, and more. Let's go. It's Tuesday, August 29th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. If you like this show and others I've done, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That actually helps both of us out. And I'm sure there are some out there that wonder why I bring this up periodically, as do most who do shows like this. I'd obviously rather not talk about liking and subscribing, but saying it on the shows actually works. When I don't bring it up, I might get 30 or 40 new subscribers in a day. But just taking a second to mention it can get me 100 or 150 or more new subs in a single day. That's a big difference. And the effect snowballs over time. We crossed over 22,000 on YouTube this week and 25K is the goal for the year. So hit that subscribe button. Uh, before we get into my main topic for today, I wanted to quickly point you to this really weird Ricky Thornton Jr. stat. I brought this up earlier this year, but it has basically continued. All of his 32 top 10s this season in Lucas competition are also top fives. He has not finished in positions 6 through 10 in any Lucas show this year. That means in 43 races, he either finishes in the top five or down the order. There's literally no in between, and it is feast or famine. It certainly worked out because it's been feast way more often with 16 victories and just 11 finishes outside the top 10. But every time I look at his driver page at dirttracker.com slash analytics, it weirds me out a little bit. Anyways, moving on. Over the weekend, we found out that following Saturday night's World of Outlaws late model show at Davenport Speedway, the current track leaseholders, Ricky and Brenda Kay, are done promoting the facility. The couple had been operating Davenport since June of 2019, but uh, going forward, the Mississippi Valley Fair Board will now need to find a new promoter for 2024 and beyond. The track website does still show two more races left on the schedule for the year. It's a pair of Hoker trucking late model shows on September 22nd and 23rd. There is no mention of those races being affected by this news. In a statement, the couple thanked the fans, staff, and competitors at the track along with the fair board. In a post of Dirt on Dirt, Ricky said they want to spend more time with their grandchildren as well. Announcements like this seem to be pretty common uh, these days, and it was only a few weeks ago that the promoters at Lawrenceburg Speedway in Indiana, uh, the Rudisills, decided to end their time as promoters uh, at the, of that racetrack. We also know there are multiple other facilities around the country at this moment that are actively for sale, and this doesn't feel like a great trend. A lot of the folks that run these racetracks are aging out, and there doesn't appear to be a really long line of new hopeful promoters and investors waiting to take these tracks into their futures. It's a tough business, there's massive challenges, and it's a business that's kind of been fairly against change and innovation, especially recently, and it's been a rapidly changing entertainment and sports environment. In the cases of uh, Davenport and Lawrenceburg, the operators effectively can just walk away and it's left up to the fair boards and the towns to find solutions. But things are more difficult for those that own tracks, and it's why we've seen tr uh, some tracks go away completely. If you might remember back to last year, we did a few daily shows around Grandview Speedway and the auto salvage companies like Copart buying up these racetracks. Owners and families can cash out to get nice paydays, and the salvage companies can move right in with existing permits and zoning in place and that work for the type of business they do. We've also had plenty of facilities go away completely or be redeveloped like I-80 Speedway in Nebraska that we watched get liquidated down to the ground early in 2023. They sold everything. And I don't know how you solve for aging track owners and things like poor management from ever-evolving fair boards, but it's a serious underlying threat, I think, to the health of the sport, especially at the lower and weekly levels. The tracks are often their own worst enemies, and the reason many are in such tough shape is because of the years of little or no progress and no evolution. New owners and operators would need to sink lots of dollars into these places to bring them up to more modern standards, and there's no guarantee at this point that the investment would pay off. It very much seems as though the contraction of available dirt racing facilities will continue because of that. There are some bright spots out there, though, with some younger and more innovative thinkers, and there's certainly tracks uh, that will remain cornerstones of the sport, places like Eldora, Knoxville, you know, the big names that you think about. And maybe we need some of these less potent operators to find something else to do, but Davenport and Lawrenceburg feel like sizable losses. Hopefully some fresh folks can be found to take over these places, but this is a problem I just don't know how you begin to fix.
We had some sprint car driver news out of Ohio yesterday with Prosser Racing and Sean Rahal announcing they have split. In 29 races this season, Rahal had one top five and eight top tens, mostly at Ohio tracks. There was a few ventures into PA and uh, Indiana in there as well. His best stretch of the season has really been in recent weeks. He's got six top tens in his past seven starts, including a fifth on August 20th at Tri-City. Team says they will share their plan soon. While Ray Hall uh, tweeted, he's got sponsors, engines, a car, and other equipment, and is looking for another deal to finish out the year. Uh, obviously, with all of that stuff, sounds like he'd be a pretty good guy to partner with. If you want some racing tonight, the Short Track Super Series Modifieds are headed for Georgetown Speedway. The track is fresh off their first ever Lucas Light Model Show, and now they welcome in the Modifieds for 6,000 to win. Matt Shepard is the South Region points leader right now, and he's also the defending race winner. Shepard is currently on a streak of seven straight races, finishing either first or second between the Short Track Super Series, Super Dirt Car Series, and various weekly shows. His last finish worse than ninth was way back on July 1st when he was 22nd at Fonda. It's obviously been another incredibly dominant season for Shepard and that 9S. Other drivers expected uh, tonight uh, to race include Billy Pouch Jr. He's won this event before. Mike Mahaney, Ryan Krejcian, uh, Ryan Godown, Mike Guler, and a bunch more. Things really start to ramp up for the Northeast competitors in the coming weeks. There's a lot of big money on the line. You got 12 grand to win at Utica Rome coming up, 15K at Lebanon Valley. There's 10,000 to win races at Weed Sport in Albany, Saratoga. Then we get into the really big money, 53,000 to win at Fonda, 51,000 at Super Dirt Week, and then later into October, another 50,000 to win show at Port Royal. I think it uh, should be a really fun next month or so with the modifieds and all of the money available. Uh, in the virtual dirt world last night, the iRacing Award of Outlaws lay model competitors were at Eldora. Kendall Tucker started fourth, got to the lead early, and never looked back for his second win of the season. His teammates in Evan C and Blake Majulis rounded out the night's podium. The win for Tucker moved him into second in the championship standings, but C actually extended his advantage uh, for the championship just a bit. He's now 82 points up with just two races left. The top four in C, Tucker, Rumsey, and Majulis really seem to have separated themselves from the rest of the field. And at one point, they were the top four cars last night. I think unless he has pretty massive issues in the final two shows, C should easily be on his way to another title here. Lincoln Speedway is on tap for next Monday night with Charlotte set to close out the 2023 season on September. 18th. Uh, if C is able to do it, he will take down $10,000. Uh, that's it for the show today. Make sure to hit up the streaming schedule over at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. There are a few things on it today, so uh, check that out. I hope you guys have a good Tuesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. 